let's start. So welcome everybody to the CBOR interim. Um, this is an official ITF meeting and the note will apply. Uh, yes, so I, we have an agenda for today. Is uh, You can see it on the code EMD link that uh, Christian has posted in the chat and Michael in Jabber chat if you're there. Um, so for today, we wanted to first have a short discussion or yeah, a document status update and any issues that might come up. And um, uh, then we can talk about the individual documents and Michael has uh, some slides for those. And then any other business, anything else uh, you want to talk about or discuss today? Okay, if not, then we can start with the status update. Um, so for your information, uh, for uh, the TAGSOID draft, we're still waiting for Sean's reply about the IPR declaration. And uh, it's been uh, two weeks and one day. So it's, it's, not, um, it's not been uh, months or anything, but uh, we had really zero reply whatsoever. So, um, yeah, we don't know like how long should we wait and what to do if, if we don't get any answer from Sean. So two, two observations. Uh, the, the last time we had this problem, I actually dug out his eBay account. Okay. And managed to elicit a response from him there. Um, so I, I did this again, <laughs> uh, okay. but I uh, haven't uh, received a response from there either, mm. uh, but at least his eBay account shows that, that he is alive. So he's, he's uh, still buying and selling things. Um, and uh, so, um, yeah, uh, I don't, don't know more about that, but I think the, the general observation is that, um, most of the things that, that he originally contributed to, to this document uh, have uh, uh, gone in, into a different... Yes, uh, in the split uh, document. Yeah, and, and so I think uh, it would not be an entirely wrong uh, to put him into the contributor section instead of the author section. Of course, the next question is uh, whether... Uh, our AD will be happy with a shepherd report that mentions this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I also have to contact him via another channel, LinkedIn. Um, I am tempted to wait a little bit longer, um, maybe one week or so, but yeah, the shepherd review is ready. So. <sighs> yeah. The, the the thing that would need updating at very least is the is the address because the the URI that is given for his company address um doesn't doesn't resolve anymore or doesn't 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 give any responses anymore more precisely. Um so I'm not sure whether Penango is still in business or whether this can be reasonably determined in the United States. Um but at least it's not a meaningful contact contact as it is there. Now. Ah, I wondered what business address you meant because I'm, I'm always using shontech.com. Yeah, yeah, um, that's 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 outdated but alive. Yes. But okay. but it's given as penango.com and that's gone. Yeah. Maybe Barry, do you have experience with this situation? Can you tell us uh, what some recommendations? With, with which particular situation? Not so we approach. have a, a co-author in the document uh, that is under Shepard Review that is not answering to uh, right. IPR and uh, yeah. And yeah, um, we tried to contact him for two weeks. So if the issue is just the, you know, getting the IPR release, whatever, uh, moving him to a 
to a contributor section doesn't help. It um, somebody who was a significant contributor does need to confirm. Um, part of it depends upon how well you know him. Uh, if if you re if you know that he, there's really no IPR issue, then you can move ahead with it. Uh, but if he stays disengaged, you'll have a you'll have trouble during uh, auth forty eight. So, right. Yeah, and I I uh, think we will. Okay. Well, uh, auth forty. So, and during auth forty eight, you as the responsible AD will be able to approve um, for him. Mm -hmm. uh, but we usually save that as a last resort. I mean, I so, yeah. so I guess from an off 48 point of view, it's good to move him to the contributors section if he's really gone incommunicado. It's not the first time that he uh, is not uh, easily reachable. And it's not um, the first draft where we had to do that. Rain tags had exactly the same problem at yeah, some point. Yeah. <laughs> And the other thing for, for the shepherd write up, you can always answer the IPR question with um, that. We, we believe that he, that he has been in compliance with uh, BCP 79, but we do not have confirmation because he's gone AWOL or something like mm -hmm. that. You can just put that in the shepherd write up. But yeah, it's, it's not good when you have a co author who's uh, who doesn't respond and, and there's really little you can do about it in the long run. So I think our plan is to uh, wait maybe one more week or so, uh, because now we try to contact him via other channels, um, and then if nothing's, if if we get no answers, maybe pass and move him to the contributor section, and we will post a shepherd review um, or Christian will, Christian yeah. is going to be the shepherd, um, and uh, we'll move it forward. Okay. Okay. Um, then I noticed that we got a update on the Seaboard Pack document. Yeah. So, so one of the results of the last meeting was that we need more examples. Um, so I actually put in an example um, that that doesn't use the the suffix. Um, uh, mechanism yet. It, it uh, only uses the prefix mechanism because my current code doesn't do suffixes. Uh, and uh, uh, I actually didn't manage to, to finish fixing the code, so this is partially handcrafted. Um, but I think it, it should show how the, the prefix uh, compression at least uh, would work. And the example <coughs> isn't invented. That came from, an, uh, from a hackathon in 2017. Uh, where we we had some uh, W3C Web of Things uh, uh, stuff and and wanted to know uh, what uh, what uh, options we had for um, making this a little bit more compact and that that's actually when I wrote uh, the the current implementation of of Cibola Pact. So that that's one thing. What I haven't managed to do yet is come up with a good way to uh, add the, the circumfix uh, suggestion that Christian has made. I think that that is actually pretty good, um, but it's also more complexity. Um, and uh, th there's also this this uh, template uh, draft I wrote a while ago for LPWAN. Um, so I think that, that that's really its own little can of worms. And um, I think that the, the best possible outcome would be that we understand uh, templates, circumfix, and packed in, in such a way that this can be an, an optional additional ingredient. Uh, but I haven't actually managed to... to come up with a way of doing that. So, so Dash 02 does not address the second fix proposal. And, and if you look into the example, you see a good reason why you, you want to think about the second fix proposal. So uh, when preparing the example, I noted that, that we had this, this thing sitting there since 2017 telling us we should be doing that.
Okay, so we're waiting for um, for people to read this this one. More feedback, right? Um, yeah, not much has changed, but but the the numbers have been allocated. I stuck to the one quarter uh, space for for suffixes compared to prefixes. And there is an example that that's worth looking at. Mm. Right. Um, on on the topic of of making progress around the circumfix expansion, what what I think would help is if we had a bit of a better idea on whether the dictionary needs to be agreed on verbatim or whether that there needs to be just semantic agreement. That is, for example. If the if both parties could say that um, this particular variable um, expands to the document request URI, um, whatever that is, and if both parties are in disagreement, this, the whole protocol won't fall apart. Or whether there needs to be explicit agreement, because if we have this kind of thing, then I think that the whole templating and um, templating and circumfix expansion might become a lot easier. So the, the, the current document, I think, is trying to give a very mechanical way of constructing the tables. And I think we should stick to that. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we cannot have other ways of contributing to that uh, those tables that are more context dependent in, in the way you just described. So I think we can have the best of both worlds. So, so people who want to do something like security, where we ha they have to be absolutely sure that they exactly know what the statement that they are signing means, they can go with a strict part. And those people who don't actually need that, like, like uh, what thing description probably doesn't need that, uh, could use more, more context in constructing these tables. Okay, um, I think that's it for now, uh, and we can move to the next agenda item. Yeah, let, let me just say what my plan is. Um, I, I started I fixing the, the CBOR Pact uh, implementation, and uh, well, the, the, the term is ending here, and people find out that they need to have working instructions how to handle COVID after the end of the term. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of, of confusion <laughs> at the moment. So all the time I had allocated today for working on this uh, went, went into that bit bucket. Um, but I, I hope to have an updated Zero Pact implementation within 10 days or so. And then, of course, uh, when people can play with this, uh, maybe we, we get uh, more more substantial, more deep uh, feedback okay. and uh, on, on what we like about this and what we don't like about this. OK. So, yeah, we have one more meeting before ITF 110. Um, so hopefully, we can uh, do a status update for for next next scene. Great. OK. Um, and that's it about working group documents. Uh, so, uh, let me see, go. Cool. Um, I'll just um, jump in quite briefly here because I've seen a few names. Um, please make sure to add yourself to the blue, to the blue sheet in the posted um, minutes. Yes, thank you, Christian. Go ahead, Michael. Uh, is that displaying? Yep. yep. All right, so this is a short draft on um, a way of tagging Seabor uh, protocols on uh, primarily on disk um, and I'll explain why. Um, first part of it came from the conversation about a month ago about we had different things about Seabor uh, encoding of certificates, uh, private keys, and this lot, this kind of thing. And, and particularly private keys don't tend to get transmitted. Um, and there's a bit of a disaster in the PKIC space in terms of the file extensions where everything is a .pem file. Um, 
And um, unless someone has a convention, you know, blah, 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 the priv, you don't actually know if it's a private key or not. And sometimes PEM is always a private key and CRT is the certificate. And there's a bunch of other things that kind of, I think it's been a bit of a management disaster, particularly for less technical people. Um, file, however, will mostly tell you, it's a Unix command, it's been around since the 1970s, that would mostly tell you what what is what, and so that saves you because there's actually, you know, obvious encodings in that, and people steeped in the know actually can usually recognize what it is by the base 64 after a while because the first couple bytes tend to be very consistent. Um, and um, so even if you actually say, I don't really, I'm going to compile all the stuff into code, when it's source code and on a constrained system, when it's source code and you're putting it together, you may actually find that you you can't remember which piece went where and which part was for which part, which uh, thing. And so I think it would be useful to be able to tag things usefully. Um, so today, um, um, right now, if you... Um, point file at a CBOR file, you are told uh, by the file command that it's a CBOR if it starts with that um, uh, CBOR 550, uh, what is the decimal number, 55799, uh, then it definitely gets identified as CBOR. And that's great, but it's not as wonderful as it is. So I basically just was converting a bespoke 25-year-old interface that basically threw structures across an IPC. Um, and I did this because I didn't want to, uh, I don't want to have to link the C code into uh, Rust or, or or Python to be able to do IPC properly. I said, well, hey, I want it in CBOR, then I don't have to do anything. It's just a CDDL between the two. And I was just dissatisfied in my unit tests because I have actual records like this, this IPC. I have them as records all over the unit tests um, because that's how I do my unit testing is from uh, is from input like that. Um, so my proposal is that we start with the regular CBOR tag and that we put another tag inside of it, which I recommend is comes from the first come first serve policy um, and that you ask for uh, 32 bits at least. Um, and um, that puts it squarely in the four byte space um, and it's relatively easy to get. I got one, this one up here on the screen is OPSN uh, in ASCII, if you were to look at it, which is for OpenSwan, which is where it's going into. Um, the file uh, command suggests very strongly is the first per point is that the initial match is is uh, 32 bits long, and at least 32 bits long, and it's a unique match. Um, so uh, the CBOR tag followed by 32 bits of per protocol tag makes it very uh, simple. And then we had a discussion on the mailing list as to what exactly you would tag um, uh, because I had a previous proposal that did some other things and someone very brilliantly pointed out that the tag BOR as a byte string, it spells CBOR in the disk. So if you were to look on the disk, you would see four bytes of this 55799 uh, tag followed by your four bytes of your protocol followed by the word CBOR. In, in the hex dump or the, the, has, the ASCII, which would be a very good clue if you were actually looking through, uh, you know, random files that or stuff and you didn't know what they were and you see this, you're like, oh, I could probably decode this with CBOR. So uh, now I do this and I run file and I have a extension that says it and it tells me exactly what it is. Um, and that's really about it. Um, and it's really a BCP and uh, it doesn't require any allocations because anyone who needs code points will just go first come first serve. And this simply says, I, you know, go do this and do it this way. Um, the other point is we had a conversation as to whether or not this would be a prefix tag to the original item, the actual thing you want to do it, or a CBOR sequence. And I went for recommending a CBOR sequence. Um, it's not really a lot harder to parse off the disk. And it very clearly says this is not the object you're looking for. And the next object is the one that you want. And then that's the one that you have. And it's free of tags of this kind of thing if you don't want them. Um, and uh, because why send an extra 12 bytes over the wire if you already know uh, what it is? That's it. Any questions? Doesn't this prefix thing technically disagree with the uh, semantics of the original CBOR tag that says this is CBOR as opposed to now actually it's a CBOR stream? Hmm. 
Well, the, the tag is applied only to the first 12 bytes. So it's technically a, tr a true true information. <laughs> it's true information on the Seaboard semantics, but it's not true information on the intended semantics that it can also be used in a file like context and say that the rest is a Seaboard file. So you're suggesting that 55799 is not the right initial tag. We should have a, this is a Seaboard sequence tag that says this. Yes. Uh, maybe not a bad idea. Okay, I, I'm not opposed to that. Uh, you know, 55798, I don't know, whatever, will make something up, but um, I, I don't have a problem with that. Adopt the document and let's make that change. Yeah, there's a little bit of arithmetic behind this 55799. Yeah. Um, and I think the most important thing is that it uh, clearly makes this not a UTF-8 file. Or not a Unicode file in in any of the other Unicode uh, transformation formats, and as long as, as uh, the number you pick also has this uh, property, I think we're good. Okay. So I I still would um, for for those people who actually have to do a dot cbo not a dot cbo sec uh kind of file um i i still would like to have the convention spelled out um how to do this in one cbo data item so there you would actually properly use 55799 and okay. um i think you would still go for this 32 uh bit uh, tag and uh, that probably needs some wording about there that it really needs to be 32 bits in the preferred encoding and then I would probably just put the thing in there so you would not remove 12 bytes you would remove 8 bytes and otherwise you, you are fine so th you're right this this would be the payload yeah that would be the payload so the, I would put this as an alternative way of doing things into this draft if you don't mind uh, but with a clear preference expressed to doing the SIBO sequence thing. Okay. So I, I wrote the code and uh, my code. And, and actually one of the things is that my IPC actually started with a, a magic number, which was re re which was changed almost every single revision of the software <laughs> um, because the, the structure would change, right? Because it was a C structure being thrown across. And so what the thing that I needed was I wanted to say, okay, I need to be able to see that this is actually the newer one, the SIBO one. And so that's why I, would, I actually don't care what what happens um, because I'm like mem compare for the first eight bytes and if it's good, good I'm I'm then I process it as Seabor and if it's not then I you know I have a little bit of legacy uh, support that I will remove two versions from now because um, the big problem is when the software restarts you have to do the IPC to get make the software restart and if you wind up using the new tools on the old software. And vice versa, even. Yeah. So. All right. So, um, do you want me to make this change uh, before adoption, or does the working group wish to adopt it and then uh, instruct me to make the change? So, right now it's individual, so you can make the change if you want to, right? <laughs> yes. Um, but it's I also would... not an obstacle to adopt adoption, so we can adopt no. this with the yes. understanding that the change will be made. So you can yes. issue the adoption call today. Uh, I would like to hear if there is on other people. Alert. So I know that you have asked in the mailing list if you think this is in scope of the working group. And my opinion is yes. Um, it is in scope of the charter of Seabor. And um, what else? Uh, yes, I would like to hear um, more people uh, explicitly see, explicitly say they they think this should be done in Cibor. Um If you think so, in the in the call, and then we can confirm this. In the we can ask the question in the mailing list as well. So now it's the time if you don't think that this should be adopted or if you do think that it should be adopted. 
to uh, to state it. Yes. Here so the last one in the chat to do it in Seaboard. Okay, and I guess we need. Uh, it would be good to have some people look at it and and to state uh, what they think. Um, okay, and also you were saying, uh, Michael, in the mailing list that you think that this needs to be marked as BCP. Yeah, I think that BCP is the right right thing for this. Um, I guess we can still allocate a tag at uh, in BC with a BCP because we're gonna have to allocate this new Seaboard sequence tag in the uh, one plus two space. I guess it is. Um, so um, I think that needs a document, right? If I if I remember. No, it's um, you are in. The in the part that is first come first served. So you can just okay, go so ahead we, and allocate we, it and then write into the document this has been allocated. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, and but we can yeah, so but we can also right. Um yeah. Exactly. I'm gonna say but but it's it's fine that when we write when we do the first come first serve that we point to the document as an internet draft yes. um to do that. Okay. So we just need to come up with the right the right number, uh the right uh magic in that number. Um and okay, yeah, but I think it's a BCP. I don't think that it's just. I don't think it. There's anything standards that you need needs to be said about it. Yeah, I think there will be standards at some point that will reference this and say, our tag is uh, this, and um, but uh, this document can be a BCP. Okay, but we'll start with the adoption first, and then um, we can resume this discussion later on as well. Okay, so we can move to the next item. Oh, with you, Michael. Mm -hmm. uh, that one? Yes. Okay, so... Um... While encoding this bespoke protocol, I had IP addresses to send and uh, uh, V4s and V6s. And I looked and said, oh, there must be a tag for that. And I found tag 260 and 261. And I found that tag 260 says basically it's a V4 if it's four bytes. It's V6 if it's 16 bytes. And it's Ethernet if it's six bytes. And I then said, well, what about eight byte Ethernet, which is definitely a thing. Um, and um, I also realized, well, you know, you might be forced. In my case, I don't care if I don't, I'm not that sensitive for size, but uh, on the wire, you might be forced to send 16 bytes, uh, which and there may be many zeros, um, eight bytes of zeros if it's a prefix, uh, a typical prefix. Um, and then I looked at, okay, what about prefixes? And um, in both cases, these point to uh, essentially point to a GitHub wiki page as the documentation, uh, a guy named Rava, I don't know him, I didn't recognize his name um, to do this. And I looked through this and I went, okay, but he's telling me to apply it to arrays and maps. And I went, well, I don't really wanna do that. And um, and then I realized that um, that the way that it does prefixes is it puts the prefix as the key, if I understood it correctly, and the, the prefix length as the value of the map. And um, since we're not allowed to have duplicate keys in a map, um, this presents a problem if you actually need for some reason to send two prefixes that have different lengths along the thing. Um, it's not crazy in some configuration situations where you may have uh, multiple prefixes that have uh, that differ only in their length for some reason, um, maybe uh, simply because of the way they're derived or um, because that's the way the guy typed them in. Um, so I didn't want that. And I said, I, I really don't, I want to do something else. And so I said, I really want to do it this way, which is basically have a tag 
that says, here's my uh, my 16 bytes of IP, the six address, and here's my subnet. And I really want to put the prefix length first uh, so that, um, I don't know, it just seems it just seems more uh, pleasing to me to do that, to be able to look at that first and then say, okay, um, this makes sense and I'm going to, going to uh, put it in the right the right place um, and then finally that i would only send as many uh, bytes of the prefix as were not zero so i could omit trailing zeros if i wanted to do that um, i got a private message from brian carpenter saying that the document needs to be more clear about when the prefix length is not a multiple of eight um, that the trailing bits are zero must be set to zero by the sender and must be set to zero by the receiver um, and he had concerns about covert channels and things like that being there otherwise. Um, and also because the prefixes tend to be used um, combined later on with uh, an OR operation. So you really got to make sure that the trailing zero bits really are zero. Uh, you get kind of a disaster. So the V4 tag looks identical. Um, it uses the same tag for, v for prefixes and addresses which is the understanding that an array means that it's a subnet or a prefix and the no, none means it's not. Um, and if the V6 address shows up in a context where you expected a subnet, well, then the assumption is it's a, it's a slash 128 or a slash 32. Um, so those would be a typical, or these are our example, 192, 168, 1.2.0. Uh, um, again, the last byte in this one is omitted. It's always zeros. And uh, what needs a one plus one tag ideally, so that needs a document. And so Carson suggested it could go into notable tags. Um, and I'm happy with that as long as the working group uh, is willing to do an early allocation of it since that document is at this point expired even. That's it. I am um, wondering, Carsten, as a Seaboard Tags uh, expert, it's not early allocation needs to come from um, can we do early allocation without? Well, it, it's not uh, an RFC thing, it's um, a specification required. Yes. section, if I remember correctly. So whenever there is a specification and the designated expert agrees, let me just check whether I'm saying the truth here. Yeah, so one plus one in the first half of one plus two are specification required. So the only reason I would not want to go into the notable tags document is if the working group didn't want to do an early allocation, in which case I would prefer to pro simply progress this document ASAP. Um, but um, as long as the any whatever gets to the allocation happening sooner, that's that's yeah. what I, uh, I I care about, and I'm not sure about the schedule for notable tags at this point. I, I didn't look at it; it was expired. Yeah. So it sounds to me it's a little bit uh, making this more complex. So pursuing this as, as your own uh, document for now seems to be the, the least complex way of doing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can always Maybe. merge them later. <laughs> uh, it also makes it easier to get reviews, um, you know, yeah. on this. So I would keep it as, as it is, yes. Um, so it just occurs to me, um, instead of mm -hmm. reviews, that actually um, this might be very timely going into six man. Um, they have the um, uh, Seabor encoded um, uh, uh, router advertisement option. I think it's, I haven't checked where that state of that document is, but. Um, did they even adopt it? It isn't adopted yet either. It's still, a, still a proposal. Okay, but there um, is some time constraints, is what you're saying. It's uh... Uh, no. Well, I, I actually, so um, 
uh, yeah, so it's a it's it's Ole's document, six man universal RA option. It has been discussed. I think the working group might have discussed adopting it, but I don't think they have yet. But the point is that that might be interesting to be able to tag rather than having to do a V4 and a V6. Well, what make no sense to put a V4 tag into a V6 RA maybe. Um, okay, well, forget that idea. All I was going to say is it might actually be useful in there because router the bit bytes in a in router options are 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 scarce. Um, but certainly having a way of encoding the V6 uh, prefix makes sense. Uh, but it might be that they don't need a tag anyway. It's implicitly yeah, I mean, but it's, 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 it makes sense to have a tag defined because in in a CDDA you could unwrap this tag and would would still have defined semantics. Yeah. Sam, you wanted to say something. The same as Carsten. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Um, and uh, the also this seems to be in scope of our working group. Anybody objecting to this document uh, being adopted and moving forward in the working group? Silence. Okay, so we will uh, we will uh, send an adoption call in the main list. <coughs> Um, so once this document is adopted, uh, I'll probably come up with a question uh, whether we should be doing something we have been doing for the OID uh, case uh, where we can apply a tag to an array of things and have all the things in there be interpreted as IPv4 addresses or IPv6 addresses. So I was just thinking about the, the array, the array semantics, um, and um, you know, basically, <clears throat> can you distinguish between these two sides of things? Uh, obviously enough. I mean, if the first, it's if the first, if it's an array and the first item is an array, then that's obviously a subnet. Um, but if if it's an array and the first item is is not a an int, then it's a address. I don't know. That seems pretty loaded to me, but um, I don't know, right? Yeah, we don't really have to solve that now. But uh, um, I, I just wanted to to plant the thought, and and then maybe somebody will come up with a good way of doing this. Yeah. So so in my experience so far, encoding and decoding it. Um, it's not a. It, 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 it's not such a big deal. You actually spend more time, more lines of code, you know, getting the the ad the content into your own structure than uh, I do figuring out what it is. But um, I don't have I don't have a require I don't have a requirement to have sufficiently long lists of these things that I would need to do that. But uh, I'm sensitive to other people's needs here. Okay, just wanted to bring this up. Great. Sounds good. Um, I just want to note that, yes, we will do this adoption calls. And um, uh, please, I know our mailing list is a bit uh, um, slow responding sometimes. So you know, if you think this is a good idea, please go ahead and, and reply to the mail thread, even if you were in the call and, you know, you have already um, stated that you think this should be done and uh, you do not object. So that helps us um, have a, a, a trace of, of um, consensus on adoption. And that was it. Um, so we're done with the agenda items and uh, last item was any other business so yeah maybe it's worth pointing out uh, that the w3c did specification has some some cyborg content 
and uh, they they just recently decided to do something. I don't understand that, so I, I cannot report on what they did. But uh, uh, in in the section uh, CBO uses usage in other SDOs, it's maybe worth looking at what what happened over in the DID uh, spec. Uh, I still don't don't know whether this DID spec will will ever be used for anything, but uh, I think if it's there, we should make sure that they're using CBO in the right way. So I just advise them, for instance, to no longer reference 7049, but reference 8949. Um. Is there anything that we as chair need to do for that, Karsten, or? Um... I don't know because I don't understand what they just decided to do. Um, okay. <laughs> so somebody who's, who's a little bit closer to the DID uh, work maybe should try to understand what's going on there. Mm-hmm. We know of anybody who is active uh, there and IDF. Some of the names do sound familiar to me, but maybe that's because I've looked into DIDs for unrelated reasons. Um, yeah. I'll make it an action item for me to look through this and, and get at least a, a rough, rough idea and possibly even reach out to the people because they're kind of almost next door, at least some of them. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? If not, I think we can close the meeting today and we have our next interim in two weeks and that will be the last one before ITF 110. So thank you everybody for joining and talk to you in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. See you later. Thank you. Bye.